Hello lovely people, welcome to what is probably my last book chat ever. So I'm recording this at the point where I've decided I'm going to start doing monthly wrap ups. Um, which will expose how how much backlog of book chats I had because you'll have seen a lot more in between me starting doing that and posting this video. But the time has come. Um, book chats are essentially just a way that I used to use to just wrap up my reading at my own pace, but actually I'm really enjoying the structure the structure of a monthly wrap up. So I just thought I'd run through all the books that I haven't talked about in a book chat yet, get them out of the way, clear the way for a monthly wrap ups to continue. I will start off with Timeless by Gail Carriger. As you will have seen from previous book chats, I've been working my way through this series. I think I'm going to call it a day having finished this one. This is the fifth book in the Parasol Protectorate, which is like the first of these series. We follow um, Alessia Tarabotti, uh, Alessia, Alexia Tarabotti. She's referred to as soulless because she has the ability to cancel out supernatural beings. So in this world, like, a werewolf or a vampire is someone who has an excess of soul. That's what helps you become those things, like to survive the transition. Whereas Alexia is soulless, and if she touches these things, they they revert back to being human. Um, shenanigans have ensued by this point. This is the fifth book in the series. As you can tell from the backdrop, like we end up in Egypt at some point, which is a plot line that has been bubbling for a few books now. Um, I have enjoyed this series. By all means, on its tin, it reads like something that would be absolutely my jam. It's like a bit steampunky. We've got like supernatural beings, we've got a heroine who, there's, there's a humour here, um, all of these things are good. Just at the edges, it's not quite my thing. The humour doesn't always hit for me. I think sometimes for me it feels a little bit mean-spirited at times, and that sort of manifests itself in some of the, like, Alexia, the whole point is that she's soulless. It's just sometimes like the way that her friends are talked about and stuff like this, or just some of the humour, like there's a bit of humour in this that's related to like, oh, those natives, and I don't, I don't, that doesn't, I don't like that. It doesn't, it doesn't make me laugh, but it also makes me be like, you know when a joke doesn't land and then you just feel a bit awkward about the fact that it didn't land with you? That's how I feel about a lot of this. I also just feel like we took a really long time to get to this point. And then I got to the end and I was like, this feels like it could, the, the series feels like it could have been at least one book shorter. Um, this book is sort of, for me at least, read like a book of two halves where we had the first half was just sort of like stuff happening. And then the second half, we actually got to Egypt and the plot happened, you know? Like we had like pop-ups from characters and then it was like, and now the plot is happening. Um, one thing I did really like is I should, I, my friend jokes with me that I should make t-shirts that say, I didn't really care for the romance because I know, I know, I don't seem to be a massive romance reader. I like romance, I promise. Um, I don't vibe with the main romance that is Alexia and her werewolf guy, just because I'm not into things where it's like territorial werewolfy things. I don't, I don't care about like growling men who are like, you're mine. I don't care for it. However, there is a subplot romance that develops in here between two male characters who have not previously interacted very much. And as it was unfolding, I was like, oh, is this going to be a thing? Actually, I really enjoyed that. I felt like there was, without spoiling who the characters are, um, I felt like both characters, our understanding of them and who they are has changed quite a bit as the series has gone on. They've both been able to develop a little bit um, in ways that, that make them quite different to who they were when it started. And these people that they've ended up as, actually, I see why they would connect and I see what I see that like foundation that then like lends itself to this being something of longevity particularly in their case where the nature of some of these supernatural beings is that you've got quite a lot of time um yeah I actually really enjoyed that aspect of it so this is not a series that I think is bad at all and I would there are so many people like I would recommend this to I like literally I have all the books because I lent my mum the first book because I knew she'd love it and she has there's a series that is following 
Prudence, who is the child of Alexia. There's another series that's like a backstory. She loves them all. She's had a really great time reading them. And there are people who I would actively recommend this to. It's just for me personally, it didn't quite hit the way that I wanted it to. And it's been a perfectly fun reading time. But I have so many books that I want to read that I don't think I'm going to go for the rest of the series in this. After that, I want to talk about Hungry by Grace Dent, which is a memoir of wanting more. This is Grace Dent's memoir about um, her life. I know Grace Dent best as a food critic. She writes for The Guardian. She is regularly on MasterChef. Um, but I didn't know a lot about her life, her previous career. I just, she pops up and talks about how much she likes potatoes and I really connect with that. I thought she seemed lovely. Um, I enjoyed reading this. As with all of Grace Dent's writing, I feel like it's really accessible. I feel like she writes about food in a way that really just acknowledges how much food can be a comfort, is very unpretentious. Um, I know my partner always says that he, she wrote a, a review of a restaurant that did really good cheese toasties or something and how much he enjoyed that. Um, that sort of a level. And this was really interesting. She grew up in a very working class family in a very working class area. Um, it was really interesting reading about that, about sort of, um, the, the, the tensions in her family. Her, her death father had, um, other children that were not really talked about um and that's sort of something that bubbles in the background but also her, her dad is a real focal point in this because she really goes into the realization her family had about her father having dementia and how much that impacted them um especially much more contemporary during lockdown um how the family sort of dealt with that and honestly a lot of that was really heartbreaking for me um those bits it, it sort of started off as something that they were quite practical about like as, why are you being a silly sod you know that that kind of thing and then just like where it ends up and how she talks about what that was like for them to go through as a family was just honestly heartbreaking it genuinely made me want to cry i shed a couple of tears um but also one of them the recurring things within this though is food and her love of food um, but in a way that I could really connect with, like, she's not, like, singing the praises of, like, truffle and foie gras. She's really talking about, like, the practical food, like, the, the, how amazing, like, when supermarkets started becoming, like, a thing. And, like, how amazing that was and all this food that you can get for really cheap. Um, a lot of that process, I was like, yeah, God. Um, and also it was really interesting to get an understanding of her journalistic career. I didn't know how she became a journalist. And the challenges that you face when you're um, a girl up north who's trying to make it in journalism, getting to London is very expensive if you even get to the point where you've potentially got an interview. Um, just like how you break into this industry. And then once you've broken in and you get all this success, like a couple of the bits where she's talking about these trips that she gets jetted out on when she was working for um, some of uh, like the women's magazines that were really big, like that's wild to you you're like what is happening so all in all like I've come away from this I liked Grace Dent going in I like her even more I thought that this was really accessible uh very warm memoir the rest of the books I want to talk about are all either ones that I read on my kindle or the library app um I just have <laughs> I'm just like chunking through the final books that I've not talked about so I'm just gonna dive in. Um, the first one is Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth. I did read the Divergent series when I was a teenager. I really loved it at the time. I don't know if I'd love it now. So I was really interested to see Veronica Roth doing like adult fiction. I think this falls into new adult and it definitely did sort of like straddle that line between um, YA and adult. The setup of this was what really hooked me because it's really intriguing. It's um, a group of people who were the chosen ones who have fought against the dark one, seemingly been successful. And now it's like the aftermath of that for their life. Like we have these um, young adults and I'm, I say that like they are young adults. They are in their like twenties. Um, who are traumatized, who suffer from PTSD, who each of them has in their own individual way been deeply scarred by what happened. And um, this is a very slow book, 
but it is also like a book of two halves for me I feel like the first half of it is like very much just dealing with the outcome the ramifications and all of this and then there's like a turning point part way through the book and I can't really talk about what that is but then the the latter half of the book is very different as a result this is a book that I can sum up my feelings in like one sentence which is like great potential didn't meet it but in in the like the first part is very slow and a lot of people will be put off because it is just like these young adults dealing with their trauma. They did read very young to me. I think to be generous about it, I, I was like, oh, well, you know, they spent their youth having to grow up too fast to fight against this evil. Like they potentially are a little bit regressed in some ways um, because they never really got to, they had to mature really quickly, but they also never really got to actually properly mature. Um, I don't know, just sometimes for the age they were supposed to be, I felt like they read a little bit younger. But also I didn't feel like we truly dived into, like people had PTSD, but we didn't really, I just, from that first sort of like half point where we were exploring the trauma, I also, I just felt like we sort of like, we did a, we did like a level and I felt like there was potential to go even further into these ramifications. We never really got there. And then the second half changed so completely that I, I also thought it sort of, um, the tone changed quite a lot and it, it felt a little bit more like that sort of YA um, side of things rather than that more adult side that I think the first part of the book was going for. Um, that's not to say I didn't like things about this. I It's one of those where like, it, it, like I feel like it makes me do this with my hands because I'm like, it was, there were so many interesting aspects. I just didn't feel like we, didn't feel like any of them fully came into their own in the way that they could have from the premise. Um, but it ends on an interesting ending. There is a second book, I believe, um, or at least it was set up for a second book. I don't, I don't know if I'll read it. Like part of me is tempted to because the end was good. It's just then I'm like, maybe the second book will deliver more of this. I don't know. It it was an interesting book. Um, it's just one of those concepts where I feel like so much more could have been done. I don't know. Another book I read was Jingo by Terry Pratchett. Um, this is part of the Discworld series. This is specifically a City Watch book. Um, essentially, a small island is found um, off the coast of Ankh-Morpork Pork between it and Clatch. And as a result of this island appearing from the waters, um, it essentially sparks a conflict between Ankh-Morpork Pork and Clatch. So the book is really looking at like jingoism, nationalism, war, racism, all of these things. Um, but with Terry Pratchett's sort of usual, like, there's humour, there's poking fun at things. Um, I thought this was fine. It, honestly, it wasn't my favourite Pratchett. I didn't think it was bad. I think, like, a lot of the points he's making, you're like, yes, war is bad. Yes, jingoism is bad. Yes, uh, war turns people into stuff like this. It just, also, I, I don't know, maybe it was just when I read it. I just didn't really, it was one of those books where I was like, how's it fine? No, like, you know? After that is The Half God of Rainfall by Inua Ellums. This is very short, like under 100 pages. It's a novel in verse. I believe the author is a poet and a playwright. And you can really tell because like the prose is very rich. It's very lush. Um, I thought this was really fab. It's combining uh, Greek and Yoruba mythology. Our main character Demi is, um, he is the child of a Nigerian mother and the Greek god Zeus. And so he's a demigod. And um, he's a basketball player professionally. And there was this really interesting like whole thing about how how we approach like celebrity sports people and how we and how like making links between that and like deities and and, you know, like modern ideas of worship and the power that imparts and all that kind of thing. Also, there was a real thing about women in this that was great. Like women standing up to male abuse and male violence. They're very explicitly looking at like, for example, these stories we have in Greek mythology that are just all based around Zeus assaulting women. Um, and it's very explicitly like women are standing up to that and that is um, being challenged. And there was just, there was just such a, a strength and love of women in this that was really great. 
um this was it was just to be honest with you this was such an interesting for so short a book so interesting another book i really enjoyed was taste by stanley tucci i want to be best friends with stanley tucci i loved his documentary of exploring italy i wasn't sure how similar this book would be to the documentary he did and it is actually very different so i'm really pleased about that there is a lot that you get from this that you wouldn't get from having just seen the show so that was fab um i just came away thinking that he's just such a classy guy um, he talks a lot about his upbringing, um, he, both of his parents are Italian, but he grew up in America, so um, sort of the, the experiences of having like an Italian-American upbringing and then going to Italy and how things that in Italy are like wholly new, um, such a love of food, such a love of um, cooking as an action and as something you do to impart love to people. I found it really affecting reading him talking about um, he was diagnosed with uh, tongue cancer and so there was a poor period of his life where he could not eat because he was being fed um, through a tube and um, and and also how that how the treatment for that affected his sense of taste and what that was like for him him as someone who food is so vitally important to him as a human. Um, I I just thought this was a, a really great book. The love of food is sings throughout. He comes across as charming. He comes across as someone who is knowledgeable, but also very respectful of all the people that are imparting knowledge unto him. And I just really liked it, guys. I thought it was great. The final book I want to talk about is A General Theory of Oblivion by Jose Eduardo Agualusha, which is translated by Daniel Hahn. This is sort of telling the story of Anatolian independence. It is inspired by a real thing that happened, which is that um, on the eve of like independence, this woman, um, Ludo, uh, essentially like lock shut herself into her apartment and bricked up the wall. Um, and then we are experiencing years and years of history, um, partly through her eyes, but also partly like she is our central point but then we get perspectives of lots of other people around that. And this was, again, another quite short book. And in some ways for such a short book, I'm so impressed that it covered such a period of time. Um, I think the downside is that sometimes you, there's not such a depth of character always. So um, you're very much getting a broad strokes look. You're not getting too many characters that are like really deeply fleshed out. But also there was this really interesting sort of contrast going between like Ludo's isolation and then the ways that the narratives of all the other people somehow end up interconnecting. Like they're so interwoven with each other and Ludo herself, while she is connected to them, she is like isolated. It's almost like she's a spider in the centre of a web and there are these other tales that are all going but she's sort of to one side it, I thought it was really interesting I read it because of um, Books by Lanes who is one of my favourite booktubers I think she reads such interesting books and I read it because I listened to her talk about it and it made me really intrigued and it definitely like delivered on the intrigue it's just I think these elements of um, some of the execution is just why I didn't rate it like as highly as I could have um, but yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about this week. I, as I said, I'm doing monthly wrap ups by the time this goes live. So if you want to keep up with what I am actively reading, please do watch those. Otherwise, I've enjoyed doing book chats. It's been a nice, uh, carefree way of wrapping up what I want to wrap up when I want to do it. But yes, I hope you're having the loveliest of days. As per usual, please do let me know your thoughts on all of these or just tell me about books that you've read recently that you loved. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for something different.